Morning, go, or evening, grace, brethren, and sister, and good to have everybody along, back along with us here with our Word Awakening and our really can, weekend study, and look forward to continuing in the book of Haggai. Here, really excited about the uh, message that we have here this uh, evening, <clears throat> and uh, we will uh, go ahead and um, pr uh, yeah, pray first. We'll have a uh, have a time of prayer as always, praying for a revival. Do remember, my mother-in-law, she is going to be uh, having a uh, be visiting a specialist on Monday, and so. Uh, Keep praying for uh, Jenny Tyler with about her back and hip pain. Uh, she uh, is going to be having some type of injection done soon, so that uh, will probably be done in a week or so. <clears throat> And also, as we mentioned, my wife, my wife has some new medicine that they've given her, so uh, please continue to pray uh, for my wife with the abdominal pain and things that she's having. Pray that that would be of help to her. She's also going to be starting some exercise classes, and so uh, hopefully those things will help her. She's a diabetic and uh, so forth. And, and of course, let's also pray one for another, particularly people in the south here. We're actually supposed to be getting some winter weather. I know in the southeast don't get it very often, especially here in central Alabama. Uh, whenever it does come, you know, down here, people are really ecstatic. And uh, often many things happen. So I uh, pray that everybody stays safe during this uh, weather. I know up north, uh, they've had a, quite a brutal winter, I do believe, like in the northeast. And so that's where we'll be uh, next winter, enjoying that. So let's do pray for one for another. Pray for all the physical needs, financial needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs. Certainly, as always, praying for revival. And with all that being said, we'll go ahead and have a word of prayer. Uh, Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the goodness of sin. Thank you so much, Lord, for all you've done for us, all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon our hearts and upon our lives. Thank you so much for allowing us to come back and to gather in your name over the cyber waves. And thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for our salvation, uh, for the peace that we have for this ministry, and that we're able to, <coughs> we're able to exposit your word. And I pray, Lord, that we would do everything according to your will and be faithful. And I pray for my wife that you'd be with her health needs and my mother-in-law as well. That uh, she would uh, her uh, issues would be resolved. And for all of those, Lord, that are sick in body, that you would be with each and every one of them. Those on the bed of affliction for their spiritual need. That you would save that one that's lost, encourage that one that's discouraged, or claim that one that's backslid. And those trying to get the victory over things, I pray that you'd help them with whatever. That we would all be a revived people. That you'd call more people into revival, Lord God. Call more preachers to preach. And I pray, Lord, for... Uh, the financial needs, the emotional needs, all other needs out there, the family needs that people have, uh, issues that people have going on, that you would just be, be uh, with these people in these issues, that we would all grow at an appropriate rate, that we'd be the Christian, that we ought to be in rebuild your kingdom, and that way that'd be pleasing unto you. We pray for each church, that you would uh, be with them, be with each pastor, Sunday school teacher, deacon, usher, each one that takes part in the church, that you just use Bible-believing churches for honor and glory, and that they would multiply, you know, that you would call more people to plant churches and be missionaries through the world and we pray Lord for uh, uh, for uh, <clears throat> for our communities that don't have Bible preaching churches I pray that you would uh, uh, raise people up to plan churches uh, in those communities as that certainly is uh, where our hearts are and I pray that you'd bless each ministry out there Lord God each preacher each pastor missionary evangelist um, each one that takes part, church planner, uh, missionary, whoever that might be, that you just touch them and bless them in their ministries, and that all of us would just be used for your honor and glory, that you'd be with services that take place tomorrow, uh, that you would just be with each pastor as they preach, and just touch them and help them, and use them for your honor and for your glory, and just continue to bless this ministry of Word Awakening. Thank you so much for it, and may we just continue to go forward for uh, your honor and glory, Lord, for the cause of Christ, and just be with us as uh, we look over your word here uh, today. Got something very important we're going to be looking at something very exciting, and I pray that people would just take these things to heart, and they would just do what they ought to do with it, Lord God. Just cleanse us and purify us, and give us all that which we need, Lord, to be used to you in that way that is pleasing unto you. For it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. And uh, by way of announcements, got everything back in a full swing now. Uh, of course, like uh, we uh, re resumed our uh, Word Bible Institute classes uh, this past week, as well as Temperance Awakening. <clears throat> so we have those things back on again. And so tomorrow, uh, we will be starting the, the 35th Psalm uh, with our Sunday sermon. Uh, so come back and continue to uh, continue to be with us uh, tomorrow on our uh, Sunday sermons. <clears throat> and uh, with all that being said now, we'll go and continue in the book of Haggai. And this, of course, is a book that we're also writing. So this will also come out in book form when we finish everything. And today we're going to start the second chapter 
going to start the second chapter here, really just the, the, the beginning of the second chapter is what we'll look at here. And this is a chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. And then a chapter 2 of the book, it is uh, the heading is, The prophet reproves the people for neglecting to rebuild the temple. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> we're actually going to go back here, though, and read verse number 2. It says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built, and we'll have another word of prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the gifts of sin. Thank you for all that you've done, all the blessings that you have bestowed upon our hearts and lives for our salvation and for this ministry, Lord God, and for your word and for this book and the great impact that it's had in my life. And I pray that you just continue to be with us and use us for honor and glory. Uh, just help hearts and souls, Lord. Uh, this uh, this evening is our prayer. Uh, may we be rebuked in the airs that we need to be rebuked and uh, be accepted acceptable to what, to what you have for us here today. And may you just help us all to grow and rebuild your kingdom, Lord, and that way that'd be pleasing unto you. And be that servant that you would have us be, Lord. If there's one lost, convict them and save them. Uh, one discourage, encourage, and one bastard, reclaim them, Lord. And we'll be careful to give you all and all the praise and all the glory for all because you are of it and you alone. For it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray all these things. Amen. And amen. <clears throat> And so chapter 1, verses 4 to 11, is the prophet reproving the people for neglecting uh, to rebuild the temple. But this or exhortation, though, we see here, had a preliminary in verse number 2, what we just read. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. And uh, what a sin this is here, the sin of procrastination, the time isn't now. See, and how often do people say that? You know, when I read that, uh, you know, this scripture here, you know, that's what people still t still, t still say today, that the time just isn't right. You know, the time isn't right for me to live for God or do this for the Lord. And yes, you know, there, there certainly are uh, time periods for things to happen in a child, a child of God's life. You know, a time for things to happen and a time for things to begin. You know, that's obviously, you know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Uh, you know, like when I surrendered to preach, you know, that, that was a God call. You know, that was a God call to preach. And I surrendered to preach at a very young age. You know, and it wasn't long after I surrendered to preach that I wanted to be in a full-time ministry. You know, I wanted to pastor a church or be a missionary or be an evangelist, you know, full-time something. But, you know, I still had some growing to go, you know, and I've mentioned that with this ministry a number of times. You know, I was, you know, I was 12 years, you know, a lay, you know, we could say a lay preacher, you know, before I went into a full-time ministry. You know, and for things such as that, you know, like for, you know, a young, before, you know, a young preacher, you know, can go into a full-time ministry, or that could even be a young Christian, you know, there could be a young Christian that gets saved, and, you know, they're very excited about the things of God, and that's wonderful, but, you know, they might need to grow before they're in a leadership position in a church, you know, before they're a Sunday school teacher, you know, or a deacon, and there is, you know, certainly a season, you know, for things like that to happen, you know, for people to fill, you know, certain positions, you know, in certain offices and so forth in a church. But when it comes to giving our whole heart to God, you know, the time is now. You know, that time is now. You know, so many people say, you know, when I'm in a better financial situation, I'll live for God 100%. You know, when I have more money, you know, then, I, then I'll give my gas money to going out on visitation, you know, to, you know, to go into all the activities that the church has, so forth and so on. Or, you know, when I get a new house or when I get a new car, when I get a new job or when I get a job promotion, you know, I'll be completely faithful to the Lord. You know, whenever I'm like a manager at, you know, my place of employment or some type of supervisor, you know, I have more influence in the community. And, you know, the devil will always give you reasons not to sell out to God. There'll always be a reason not to do it. <clears throat> you know, if you're looking for something to hold you back from, from giving God all your heart, you will always find something, you know, probably multiple things. You know, that was certainly my situation when I started this ministry, and I, I've mentioned this before, and, you know, we'll go over it again. You know, when I started Word Awakening, you know, this ministry here, you know, a revivalistic, you know, preaching and teaching ministry, you know, of which, obviously, you know, what we're doing now, what this book is a part of, you know, be like Haggai, rebuild the kingdom of God. 
<clears throat> you know, that there were many, many, a lot of so-called viable reasons not to start Word Awakening, you know, not to go into the ministry full-time. You know, my family had very limited financial resources, and many people suggested against, you know, this ministry. They were for me getting a secular job. But God told me to start Word Awakening, and I did, and I continued in the ministry, and guess what? <laughs> you know, the Lord not only met our every need, but we flourished, you know, during this time, both spiritually and financially. <clears throat> you know, it wasn't long after I started Word Awakening that I started Word Bible Institute and Temperance Awakening. You know, ministries the Lord told me to start, God called me to do. You know, I have no doubt about it. You know, that's going on now. You know, my prayer journal expanded to 57 pages at the, you know, at the present time of this teaching. You know, that's 57 pages of prayers that I pray every day. And our family prayer list also grew to 14 pages. Like, I think, yeah, like a lot of that's actually right behind me there on the wall. That's part of it. There's part of it over there as well. You know, I was preaching and teaching five days a week. You know, I preached, you know, I preached a week-long Word Awakening revival every quarter. You know, we just did one of those, you know, this past week. You know, once every three months we have that. You know, I was constantly writing books, you know, like, you know, what we're going over now. I was street preaching on a regular basis. And with me being, doing all of this, my heart for revival just got bigger each and every day. You know, that was me and my wife. You know, and my wife as well. I actually didn't have this wrote down, and we've not announced this yet to anybody formally, but, you know, my, my wife is actually writing us, get this, my wife is writing a study Bible for women. You know, a women's study Bible. She's the first ever deaf lady to write a study Bible in history, from what I can find, and I believe the first ever, you know, lady independent fundamental Baptist to write a study Bible. And see what would have happened um, had I not gone full-time with Word Awakening. <clears throat> well, I mentioned all the things spiritually, but even also financial. Like I said, my family flourished. We got out of debt during this time. I've mentioned that before. But before we go any further, I can throw that in there as well. You know, like I said, God met our every need. God also got us, got us out of debt and has allowed us to save a lot of money. But what would have happened had I not gone full-time with Word Awakening? No doubt I would have fallen under the judgment of God. I'd have been spiritually dead. You know, because that's what God told me to do. I personally, I think God would have killed me. Why? Because God created me for revival, not any other reason. You know, God didn't create me to work a secular job. You know, I've, you know, done that in the past, you know, when I wasn't in full-time ministry, but that's not what God created me for. You know, this time, that's not what God created me for, for this time. You know, especially. <clears throat> and I know people. You know, that have, that, that have passed away, you know, when they got out of the will of God, didn't do what God wanted them to do. You know, then to add to all this, you know, God led my family to New York State to plant churches for deaf, blind, deaf, blind, and special needs and hearing people. As, you know, most of you probably know, like I just mentioned, you know, my wife is deaf. And, you know, and my family had already moved to Ontario, Canada back in 2016, were missionaries there for one year. Then, you know, we had to leave the country and move back south because our visas weren't approved. <clears throat> so, you know, we were already very familiar with the New York State, driving through there very often, you know, being beside where we lived in Canada. <clears throat> and like I said, you know, my family had already been up north, moved up there, then moved back. And, you know, and like I told my wife, you know, I could, I could think of about... You know, 500 reasons, you know, not to go to New York State. But I can think of one good reason. That's where God wants us to be. You know, plus nothing, minus nothing. I mean, we're moving again. You know, moving my daughter, who's now six years, you know, who's now six years old. Yeah. You know, lots of reasons. Not to go there. The one good one is that's where God wants us, and that's the only option that I have. You know, God's not, you know, bargaining or reasoning with me. And, you know, we're not to be procrastinating, wasting time, you know, but giving all the time that we can to God. You know, the Bible says the opposite, you know, of all that, you know, this putting off. Like Colossians 4, 5, walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Ephesians 5, 16. 
redeeming the time because the days are evil. You know, Ephesians 5, 16, you know, says it exactly right. You know, we live in very evil times. You know, children of God should be doing all that they can to rebuild the Lord's kingdom. You know, churches have closed. You know, really churches of all kinds, of all denominations, but especially, you know, fundamental Baptist churches. You know, they've closed, you know, fundamental Baptist churches. You know, they've gone liberal. You know, they've walked away from the Bible and... <clears throat> You know, the few, you know, Bible-believing churches that do exist, you know, people are leaving. Like I say often, you know, like here in, you know, central Alabama especially. You know, most independent Baptist churches you have around here, <clears throat> you know, are very small. You know, they don't run any more than 20 or 30 people, and it's mostly, you know, elderly people that are in them. You know, especially young people are leaving fundamental Baptist churches. You know, you hardly see anybody, you know, younger than 50, you know, in independent Baptist churches, you know, in this area, even a part of the Bible Belt. You know, we also need to be redeeming the time because the days, you know, the days are short. You know, it's not going to be long until that trumpet's going to sound. You know, when that trumpet sounds, it's going to be too late for lost people to get saved. It's going to be too late for, for Christians, you know, for any Christian to do any more for the Lord. You know, to try to receive crowns and rewards when they get to heaven. You know, it's not time to neglect the Lord's work and attend to secular activities. It's time to get busy building the Lord's kingdom. <clears throat> and that's actually all that we have here for, uh, for this week in study. I believe that was a good stopping point. You know, we will pick back up and, you know, start looking at verse number four the next time. But a lot of good stuff there, you know, just from our heart, you know, where our heart is. You know, it's time to rebuild the Lord's kingdom, you know, not time to procrastinate. So, you know, let's all get busy, amen, and do what we can to rebuild the good Lord's kingdom. And thank you so much for being with us. As we said, come back be with us tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow uh, Sunday. You know, we'll be opening up in the uh, 35th Psalm, so we certainly look forward to that. And we'll see you then. And for now, we'll close in prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the gifts of sin. Thank you for all that you've done, all the many blessings you've bestowed upon our hearts and lives. Thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to meet over the cyber ways. Thank you for allowing us to preach and to just uh, try to do our best for you, Lord. And I pray that we would redeem the time. You know, we wouldn't procrastinate, but we'd give you all our heart and that we would just do your work in that way that'd be pleasing unto you in the best way that we know how. And uh, may we just be used for your honor and glory, Lord God, and just go down that path that you have for us and fulfill, you know, your will for our life. Bless our, uh, uh, bless all of our families, you know, bless our churches, bless our relatives, our friends, and just uh, keep us all safe. And may we just all do what you'd have us to do, Lord, and may we be that body, you know, that is fitly joined together. You know, to do your work and to do your will, Lord, to bring us back here the next point in time. Be with us as we preach tomorrow morning and be with all the men of God as they stand and preach. And uh, may you get all the honor and glory for everything that we do because um, you're worthy of it and you alone. For it's in that precious name of Jesus Christ we do pray all these things. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, folks, for being with us. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning uh, with a Sunday sermon. Until then, till the day breaks and the shadows flee away, I am Dr. Coop and I love you and I appreciate you.